Hello everyone. Happy New Year. It's me, Ashley. Welcome back to Archetype. I've been gone for a little bit because of the holidays. Um, but yeah, we're gonna start off the new year with some funness like we usually do. So if you're in the chat, please say hi. Always like knowing people are here. And um, <clears throat> yeah, so for the new year, was kind of debating. I wasn't really sure what to do, honestly. So, uh, if you guys have any ideas, actually, in the chat, so maybe something you guys would like to see, that would be really cool. Um, woo, happy New Year! <laughs> uh, that would be really cool, but for now, uh, I'm gonna do some studies of some lizards, because it is the year of the dragon. Um, and we were working on a dragon before. Uh, there's a little hiccup with some software stuff, so maybe we can reapproach, or I can at least show you guys the finished version of that once it's finished. Um, there was really just some painting left to do, um, but due to technical difficulties, we'll just be here for the new year drawing, which, which should be still fun. So I'm going ahead, and I have Pinterest up, looking at a bunch of really cool lizards. Um, I'm just going to do some studies because my initial thought was well it's you're the dragon so i do want to kind of keep with that theme um but i also i just see some really cool lizard feet so i'm just drawing some cool fun lizard feet at the moment but i was thinking you know i want to kind of keep in the same theme of you know the year of the dragon and so i thought doing a lizard's pretty close without doing a uh another dragon since we just did one <laughs> I didn't really think that one through, did I? Uh, but that's all right. So I'm just going to be doing some studies and stuff. And I was thinking of doing a lizard. And I know back I mentioned doing a lizard wizard. Because, I mean, obviously, guys. I see something like that. I got to kind of jump on that opportunity. Um, so I might do something like that. I don't think we've done like a wizard-like character before in the stream. So I think something like that could be kind of fun. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm taking it, I'm gonna take it chill. I'm feeling a little under the weather, unfortunately, for the new year, but <clears throat> I'm here and I want to start off the new year with you guys sketching. And I thought it'd be fun to also, because it is a, a new year, kind of talk about some, you know, goals that we could achieve as artists ways we could get better, things we can do to improve. Um, and the biggest thing for that too, is if you guys ever have questions about, you know, I don't know, an artist block or something like that, as an example, um, always ask your questions, you know, as a fellow artist, I'm here to help. You know, if you've gone through something as an artist through this artist journey, chances are, probably either me or someone else has been through it too. Uh, hello, Raphael, I see you. Um, but yeah, artists are usually there to help each other out. From Brazil? Awesome. That's super cool. It's so cool to be able to uh, interact with people around the world with art. I love that. <clears throat> Makes me super happy. What better way to connect? And to, to share and be creative. See a little basilisk friend of ours here. Go ahead and draw him out. There's some really awesome, it's one of those things where I think when people start on a new maybe character design, I do this too on this stream just because I feel like uh you know, I always go, oh man, I just got to jump into drawing something immediately and designing something. But your best designs are definitely going to come out of, you know, inspiration and studying the real world first. So it's really important to, even if they're not, <clears throat> like this sketch or this drawing isn't something that's like super refined or anything like that. Um, I think it's important to give your brain basically a visual library of stuff, right? So I saw this hand, for example, and I was like, man, that hand is so cool. Um, and it's just one of those, it's a tool, you know, those shapes are a tool as a way that you can, you know, better yourself 
as an artist to create more use. You know, for example, if I was thinking of basilisk, I knew that a basilisk shape had like a square, not a square, a triangle. See, I'm even messing up my shapes. It was like, yeah, it's got like a big frill thing. But see how it's got this extra little frill that I actually was like, oh, I forgot about that. Um, I think as an artist, sometimes we forget to just go look at things that exist and things that are real and look at shape and form and body. Like there's this iguana that's swimming. Um, and it's so cool. Like the position is awesome. It reminds me, I mean, it's like, it's real life Godzilla, you know, he's got these awesome cool little arms or going like that. And if you look at like the anatomy, There's so much that you can pick up and, you know, learn and how long it's like hands are. It's really cool. And again, these don't have to be sketches that are, you know, super duper refined or anything like that. Um, it's just kind of like little notes. It's got a little other hand right here. But I like this position a lot. This position is really cool where you can kind of like see the muscles and the legs and how they come together. And make this cool swimming motion. Yeah, it's super fun. Wookie, happy new year. You're here drawing. And also draw along too. You know, if you guys are having artist block, what better way to unblock yourself than to join, you know, a fellow artist in, you know, studying lizards. We're studying lizards right now. All I'm doing is just drawing some lizards. I'm gonna take some time to warm up and practice um, drawing some lizard shapes before I jump into, you know, doing an actual lizard lizard uh you know like a character design or something because i think it's cool to you know look at shapes and look at things first uh in isolation as what is it and try to study those shapes first and see if you find anything of interest you know from it um like i think lizard arms are super cool and their shapes can be really fun. And I'm not a drawing, uh, like, word, not word for word, I guess. But, you know, like, line for line. I'm kind of looking at it and going, oh, I like this shape, which means I like this big bell kind of fat shape on the top with this, like, straight. Right? And those are things that I'm looking at. So, not that these are exactly exaggerated, I would say. But I'm really just trying to see... You know, like this one, I really liked the motion that I was feeling and the feeling I liked this arc, right? So this cool apex and arc are the things that I'm looking at. Um, and the way this is a, a nice curve versus a shape that's more complex on the other side. Um, so when I'm drawing this stuff, sometimes I'm not, I'm not really looking at getting, you know, it's not like this perfect study of something. It's just, oh, what is the shape that I initially see that is cool? Which also, I think, um, on top of that, when I look at Pinterest, I look at Pinterest as a whole. So I actually don't click and zoom in on a drawing. Because um, the most important, like, fundamentals of that study that I'm trying to do actually isn't in the details. It's in those first initial shapes. So, like, there's a cool horny toad lizard. If you didn't know, there's a lizard called a horny toad lizard. Um, and it shoots blood from its eyes, which is pretty cool. It's a defense mechanism. But I'm looking at the initial... All I'm really looking at is, you know, this basic shape that I saw, which is kind of like that. Um, and then he's got his cool little frilliness, and there's some cool stuff that goes down like that. And his neck is actually pretty thick. Um, and horny toads are relatively small which means their eyes are fairly large 
in where they sit. And his nose is really interesting. I mean, that basically is a little baby dragon. All I have to do is give it some wings. <laughs> and it turns into a dragon immediately. Um, so yeah, continuing to find inspiration around you and studying that inspiration is super important. I can't see the body, but I'm assuming you kind of lay him like that, maybe. And that's the thing is once you start building that visual library of, you know, I've drawn a lizard arm a bunch of times or you studied lizard anatomy a bunch of times. Um, I know that they're also kind of pancakey. They're really flat. Right, then you can start figuring out the, the fun shapes. And that's when initially you could just be like, yeah, and then he's got little horny wings. Right, and now you have a dragon instead. Um, or if you were to draw that same shape, So he's actually got this extra, maybe an extra horn here. Accentuate that horn. And then these ones are really big. It's like Monster Hunter vibe big. Which by the way, I saw the trailer for Monster Hunter Wilds and I'm kind of excited. Any game that has uh, me riding creatures and going and checking out other cool creatures, I'm, I'm always down, so. But if we draw those initial shapes, Again, what makes it look small is always going to be the eyes. So you can draw that same shape, you know, same thickness. But if you put the eyes, you know, maybe really far forward and really tiny, you know, that, that creates a whole different shape. Or if you put the eyes up here and put them really small, it looks kind of weird. Usually eyes are a little more forward. But the point is, is eye placement and shape, like, totally changes the anatomy and structure um, of even a shape that's the same. Right, so now you have this big frilled thing. And it's the same shape, I just changed where the eyes were. And now you can accentuate and add, you know, other big horns. And he's got a really big horned crest that like wraps down and hides his eyes, right? Which is pretty fun. Now I'm just drawing dragons because dragons are just too fun to draw at a certain point. But you get the idea of why we should study from, you know, from life. And do studies like this and turn them into something fun. I think that's the biggest thing too is, you know, I drew this iguana that initially was swimming, but he could easily be flying. But I know perspective and anatomy easily turns into something completely different. All I have to do is add some horns. And now it's a dragon, right? Put some little wings on the end. So I think I really implore, at least when I teach my students, I, I try to Try to remind students that you know if you want to get better as an artist we're talking about you know entering the new year as a taking art seriously or you know and it's funny that i say that taking art seriously because in reality the the advice that i'm about to give is to not <laughs> be serious about it but to have fun with it i think it's super important to have fun with your art you know if you don't have fun doing art if you don't enjoy the process of getting better the process of studying, using your imagination. Creativity is a muscle that we always have to exercise, you know, and it's one of the harder ones to exercise, if I'm being honest. Um, it's one that I think we kind of forget about a lot. So if we can study something like this and then use our creative brain as well to go, okay, we made a basilisk, you know, but how can we take that now and turn it into a character or a dragon or whatever it is you know how do we how do we reach beyond what we're just seeing and referencing and take something and make that more interesting um 
And that's always going to be, you know, the challenge. Angelica, I'm so excited to take digital sculpting with you, but I'm BFA. Oh no, <laughs> I heard the news that, yeah, they accidentally put, put some peeps with me that were BFA. And unfortunately I can't teach BFA. Um, but I will be, I'm always around the campus and, uh, or just uh, at least I'm around and uh, I will try to help in any way I can. You don't have to be my student for, for me to help you. But it is a shame. I always love seeing new Noman students. Um, and for those of you who don't know or just turning in, um, I do teach at Noman, and Noman is the school that puts on this stream. They're the ones that let me come on here and just doodle uh, lizards <laughs> for you guys, which is really cool. Um, And Noman is a visual effects school that's in Hollywood, but they'll be moving soon to a new location, which is really exciting. But it's only like eight miles away, but it's still gonna be very cool. Um, all the students I think will be much happier. I will miss the television center, but it's a, it's a good change. So I'm excited for all the students there. You sneak in and say hi, yes. <laughs> I won't tell anybody, I promise. Not ready to move. Yeah, I'm gonna miss the television center, but I think it'll be a healthier for all the students. I mean, it was impossible to grab lunch uh, <laughs> where we were now. There's just nothing over there, so it'll be a nice change. Uh, drawing some gecko arms right now. <gasps> Ooh, this gecko that I found. He's real cute. Time to draw. That's what I'm saying. It's like you, even though I'm doing studies, you should be getting excited about. I mean, look how cute that is. Come on. He's got this like suit. I mean, he. I don't even need to stylize it because he's already so ludicrously cartoony. I love it. Yoshinoya was all, yeah, I didn't like Yoshinoya. I couldn't handle it. <laughs> so I'm really, I'm happy for the students to, to be moving to somewhere that's going to be, be better. But um, yeah, Noman's a great school. I learned, so I went there uh, 2013 to 2016. And I graduated, I didn't take, there wasn't a BFA at the time, uh, but I took the three-year program there and then uh i've been in the industry ever since as a uh strictly as a character artist but i've worked for films and i'm currently working for games um but i've always had a passion for creatures and characters and uh that's where my my career path has led me partially because i refused to do anything else i was like i am going to draw dragons and no one can stop me so um you know, if you know what you want to do, you can go out and put your mind to it and, and enjoy it and draw it and, you know, live that life. You just got to work for it. It's so interesting. The tail gets like super thin and then it flails out like a little leaf. It's so cool. Oh, you started Noman right when I left? Oh my goodness. It's a small world where we run into everybody and people that come in and out. Uh, if you go to Noman, it's one of those things where you can walk up to someone and go, hey, I went to Noman. And if they did too, you're automatic best friends, you know? That's just how Noman works, which is really great. Uh, I've met so many good people and lifelong friends there. He's a weird little guy. He's very fun. So yeah, I'll try to just fill up a page that's kind of something like this and see. 
if I can find shapes that are interesting me, or if I'm learning a new shape. But this is a very interesting shape, you know, for a, a lizard. It's kind of fun. Could definitely do something with that later on. But, you know, when you're talking about setting goals for the new year and stuff like that, I think it's important to, you know, also stay realistic. If you've never, if you're not like a daily drawer, I don't think your first, in, your, you know, your first goal of the new year should be like, I'm going to draw every day. You know, if you draw only once a week, tell yourself you're going to draw twice a week, you know. Um, I know a lot of students that will come up to me and be like, Ashley, I'm going to, I'm going to dedicate and on Monday I'm drawing just hands and then on Tuesday I'm drawing feet and then this day I'm doing this and then I'm doing blah and they come to me with like this crazy you know rigorous schedule of drawing and to me it, there's there's a fine line between having discipline in what you do and forcing yourself to do something so much to where you're going to get burnt out and then you're not going to like it um and I find that more people, when they give themselves a schedule, end up not sticking to that schedule because it's too much pressure. It's too much to think about. Um, you know, and then they usually drop off of that schedule anyway. So uh, one, it's discipline. It's not that you can't set those kinds of schedules, but most people don't have the initial discipline to do so because they don't know how to make they haven't figured out the secret to drawing every day, which is you first got to make art fun for yourself. So if you only are drawing once a week, let's say, uh, we'll draw twice a week, but try to make sure your most important thing of those drawing sessions should be, I'm having fun drawing. Um, and the moment you're having a lot of fun drawing, stop drawing. Because <laughs> then those endorphins are going to kick in. You know, draw when you stop drawing when you feel really good about drawing, um, and then the, those uh, those chemicals would kick in and be like, "Man, I really want to do that again. That was so cool to to make something or to draw something." And um, you know, and then you're gonna want to do it again, and then do it again, and do the same thing. And then over time, you're gonna be like, "Okay, I can do it now, twice a week to three times a week to you know X, Y, and Z thing." And that's how you build up the you know, the muscle and the discipline of drawing every day. You know, I used to not draw every day, but I always drew when I wanted to. And I always drew and was always, I wasn't drawing if I wasn't having fun drawing. You know, I never saw, I never really understood the point of forcing myself to do a thing that I didn't want to do. Um, so there is a fine balance because, you know, I can't just give the advice of, only do something when you want to, because that's bad advice. But I do think it's important to find ways to make it fun. You know? And someone in the chat wiki said, I wonder what a frog-like dragon would look like. And I think that sounds kind of cool to combine like a, there's a little frog here right now that I can draw. I think that could be kind of fun. I love his hands. Hands are great. Frog hands are pretty, pretty fantastic. The weird little knees and. So alien. Maybe we could make a dragon, lizard, wizard, frog. Something. That could be kind of fun. You gotta think about what kind of wizard, though. You know, is he like a... Is he like a rituals? Is he like a witch type wizard? Or is he like a magical, like Gandalf? You know, is he like an old wizard? Or is he, you know, like Merlin pointy hat with a wand? 
type wizard. What kind of wizard do you guys think we should go for? And that's not a rhetorical question. I would actually love answers. If you guys don't give me an answer, I'm just going to keep sculpting lizards and I'm going to be like, bye guys, you guys don't get anything from me. No lizard wizards for you. Need ideas. Which brings me to another good point. Um, who was I listening to? I was listening to a podcast that mentioned a guy named James Burke, who is a telecaster for like science. Um, he has some pretty famous videos. Oh, that's a cool shape. Um, I think I found my favorite shape so far. So this guy's hysterical looking. But, um, you know, they were talking, he was talking about like creativity and like coming up with, you know, interesting things for television and, you know, about, you know, if you have an idea, should you share it? And one of his quotes that he gives is he says, uh, one plus one equals three, which basically, it's just a way of saying, you know, you should share your ideas. You should talk among people because chances are they're going to give you an idea that's going to make your idea even better. So that one plus one equals something that you by yourself could have never come up with, which I think is really cool. You know, art is meant to be shared. Um, it's meant to be like learned from and enjoyed with by multiple people and you know i hope that someone looks at my work and goes oh man i really want to you know that's a cool idea i want to add to that or i want to you know take that and maybe what if it was this right and uh i need to know the name of this lizard by the way this lizard's crazy looking looks like a tree hopper bug but lizard shaped so wild such a wild little guy. Fun fact, if you guys didn't know, um, sounds bad because I don't know the name of the lizard I'm drawing. But when I was a kid, I wanted to be the next Steve Irwin. So I wanted to be a I wanted to be a herpetologist when I was a kid. And I had this big book of snakes and reptiles and lizards and all sorts of. I used to be able to name all of them, and I can still name quite a few. Probably more than your average, but. Um, yeah, I was always fascinated with animals, ever since I was a kid, even. It's got these like little ridges that go all the way down, it's so cool. But yeah, if you're gonna be an artist, you wanna be curious and know more about the world around you and explore that especially as a character artist i mean there's so many cool characters out there already like look at the thing that i'm drawing right now i'm not coming up with this guy he's out there you know in the rainforest or something living his best life he looks a little nervous all the time but you know i'd probably be pretty nervous if i lived out in there too But well, what a fun shape that is. It's so cool. Love it. Uh, Wookie's asking, how is it teaming up with other constructs in a production environment? See, I think that's actually really cool. Is, um, you know, I'm a character artist that does the 3D side. But I still work with the concept artists um, and the other concept artists, you know, they obviously work together and it's really cool to share your work and then maybe another concept artist will be like, oh man, I never thought of, you know, because what's cool is if I say lizard wizard, or even right now, everybody has a different thought of what that is. If I tell everyone, go draw a lizard wizard, you guys are going to come back with different results. Um, which is really cool. So I think part of it is like the collaborative will make you stronger because you're going to see something that you didn't see before in someone else's work and go, oh, that's cool. What if blah, 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 right? And then you just continue to kind of grow um, onto that, which I think is very cool. I, I think in an environment, you're always going to learn uh, faster than if you're just siloed working on stuff by yourself.
All right, so I think I've drawn enough uh, little warm-ups here. It's 7.30, so I'm going to go ahead and start. Oops, that's not what I want to do. Lizard. Lizard. And that's another thing you can do, too. Um, this is an exercise that I've done in the past, is you can say, you know, lizard. And then you can think of things... You know, I'm like, oh, I think of scales, you know, um, iguana. You can be more specific. Anything that really comes to mind of that. And then you can keep branching off from there and start coming up with ideas. So if you say wizard, you know, what do you think of? You know, you're like, oh, I think of the staff. And some of this is like, it's good to start thinking of these things. But also, if wizard in your brain goes to staff, chances are maybe a lot of other people do too. So you're like, well, maybe instead of a staff, what else could he have that's more interesting than a staff, right? You're like, oh, maybe it's a magic book, right? Or maybe it's a scroll. Like what other item could you replace and like make something maybe more interesting, right? Or maybe a staff, maybe he's got something at the end of his tail. So maybe the end of his tail is his staff and he shoots magic that way or something. Um, so I think, you know, having kind of like these like word exercises are also really helpful for coming up with different ideas. Um, so that's just something else I would think. Math wizard. Oh my God. That's it, guys. It's a wizard. He's a lizard wizard, but he's just a nerdy kid with like big old glasses. He has his little books. <laughs> See? Someone's having fun with it. I approve. Got a little, you know, little feet, a little chameleon tail. I mean, it's pretty cute. Maybe he's a little basilisk. There, there's our lizard wizard. And maybe he's just always thinking about numbers. Because he's so smart. It has an abacus on it. You're going to make me look up. I know what an abacus is, but I don't know what an abacus is at the same time. I'm like, how do you draw an abacus? Oh, one of those. Yeah. That could be fun. I'm looking up images right now. I actually do like the shape of that. So, like, have maybe he holds it and he, like, moves numbers. And that's, like, that's what shoots the magic out. Also, a basilisk. It's kind of looking like a pointy wizard hat. <laughs> Just saying, guys. We're getting somewhere. That's funny. I do like the idea of the abacus. That's fun. We'll have to see if we can play onto that. Let me see if I have my lizards. I had too many feeds open. <clears throat> yeah, so this is where you can start doing, you know, figuring out little character sketches of stuff. You know, is, is he a uh, <laughs> wizard potter? you a lizard Harry and he's got a little lightning bolt on his head um I'm thinking about how to transform that lizard anatomy into something that you know, maybe walks upright. I 
And I like to start too, like, you know, if you're not sure what kind of body proportions you're going to do, or like how you want to play out, you know, the shapes and stuff, um, tackle like one thing at a time, you know, it's important to think about like, you know, how much humanoid anatomy is it going to be versus, you know, how much, uh, lizard anatomy and all that. And you don't have to like design anything yet, technically. It's my really poorly drawn abacus. Um, you know, just get kind of a, a start and a feeling of, you know, what could a lizard, you know, humanoid-ish look like. They usually have like pretty narrow chests and they kind of have like this like kind of longer oval belly, right? So you could play with something like that where the chest is a little weaker, which isn't so bad just because he uses magical powers. So that's, you know, that kind of makes sense. Uh, Ariel's asking what graphic tablet brand am I using? I'm using a Hueon, um, what's it called? 16? I think it's called the Canvas Pro. Um, and yeah, so it's the Hueon brand. I think, uh, usually our host Ninja will post something, um, and tag a link in it if you would like to check that one out. I like it. Um, Wacom is good, but this one, the Hueon's a little bit uh, easier on the wallet, and I find it works just as well. Um, I haven't had any issues with it or anything like that, so. Another thing you can do, too, is start with a, um, a, uh, a pose. It was like really thin little lizard. No one posted it for you, Ariel, so there you go. And he could be kind of like a book, booky wizard. It could be kind of fun. Maybe he is holding like a little book of spells or something. And again, like sometimes the pose helps a lot, right? Give you like an idea of um you know, like if he's a lizard, how would he be casting spells? And I do like the idea of the basilisk because it has that pointy hat feeling, which is kind of fun. Another thing that I saw was a flying lizard. They have um, uh, these big like wings that could kind of look like a cape. I almost looked up flying wizard, but that's that would give me a very direct result. Um, but here you go. This is obviously not <laughs> what I'm talking about, but like this here or this here, you know, we can make a material or something that feels like it's getting draped over. Um, that's like pretty fantastical um, and stuff. So that could be kind of cool, you know, kind of go in that route where he has like these, uh, they're like extra little appendages that stick out and they go, they kind of go like that. Right, so now he looks like he has like a cape 
which is kind of cool. Um, Action Gamer zero nine is asked, can you show body shape language? Yeah. Um, so shape language is an interesting one just because, so shape language will vary depending on what you're doing, but I think there's a few different ways you can approach what shape language means or what you're talking about when you say shape language. So for example, when I'm doing designs, so shape language transfers from not just internally, but also from like one design to another. So examples, this is a very generic, like what if a lizard stood up? So the shape language is actually more anatomically accurate. Um, but then you go, okay, what if you were to make it, you know, thinner, right? So now we're talking about like a thin shape language. So when we're talking about something that's thin, everything's thin. Right? So we think about thin, we think about long, and maybe something like elegant. So then when we're thinking about maybe what his, what he's wearing, we wouldn't make something like, oh, now he's gonna have this giant thick fur coat with like a saber tooth claw on it. Cause that doesn't fit the design language, right? Or the body language that we're, that we're using, right? So it's thin, long, elegant. So we're gonna think about, um, So I'm kind of thinking about stuff like that when I'm designing. And then maybe in the next design, we'll go, okay, what if it's, what if we're doing like a thicker one? Like what if a Gila monster or something was like an old ancient, like rock wizard lizard, then we would be like, okay, we're gonna go with like square, you know, maybe he's a little stouter. Maybe he's older, right? So we're going with big fat blocky shapes. Right? He's a very happy lizard. lizard. <laughs> uh, yeah, then we're gonna have like big blocky you know, scales and stuff that go down the body and, and things like that. And his hands are gonna be blocky shaped. And then his staff would be maybe more like thick and mangled, right? Cause it's like old and ancient. Um, so that's one body language difference. And that's how you can create variation within coming up, trying to come up with like your main design. Um, I know he does look cute. Um, and then Action Gamer is also what shape language I'm using. Right now, this is the shape language I'm using where I'm basically I'm coming up with one version where I say thin and then I come up with another one that's like, what's what if I would do something like thick? So it's a very basic shape language of coming up with just an initial silhouette or like an initial idea to jump off of. Um, and then when you're using shape language of how you connect the next part, uh, I'm assuming maybe you need like actual anatomy and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but it's, for example, if I want to accentuate, let's talk about like a lizard arm. I can make like this shoulder, like medium ish size. I can do like a very small bicep and then maybe his forearm is really big. And then he's got his little lizard hand, right? And then maybe, but how can we change the shape language of that? Well, we can give him a really big shoulder. And then maybe we can thin out his hand. Right, so me playing with the, the connections that those shapes make is what's, what's gonna, um, by J.D. Smith. Uh, is what's going to dictate how your character reads, you know, or if we just do thick from thick to thick to thick, then we're looking at length. So if this is a short length versus a medium length, 
versus a really long length, but the thicknesses are kind of the same, right? That's going to generate a totally different result um, than what we were initially doing. So these are really good exercises is you can take the same thing and try to make different variations of it. Um, you know, what if it was all really tiny and thin? Right, then we get something completely different. How can we connect neck to body part? Can I show that? Yeah, I can show that. I will show that once we start demoing, um, maybe on top of a lizard wizard. I do really like this guy. Um, that's a fun one. So I think, let's go ahead and take... Because we're also sticking with the bookie. And I might just give him glasses. Stick around long enough. So we've got this. You know, but we want to accentuate, you know, I'm going to... And Pinterest is great. I mean, I can just look up wizard <laughs> and you can get a bunch of cool like oh maybe from oz maybe from this and you can start seeing some tropes and maybe you want to play into those tropes or maybe you want to avoid them you know like what are things that when you think of wizard what do you think of um and stuff like that you know and again you're not copying directly what you see um i think it's i think it's more of like a visual background and like ideation more than anything else. Or, you know, if you see, if you know like a wizard maybe wears like a cloak, then you can look up cloak uh, if you want to be less specific and look up something that um, will just maybe generate some cool like cosplay ideas. Um, then, you know, that's also an option. Point is, is I'm going to try to find something to base like a, a costuming design off of to start kind of seeing where I can kind of go from it, um, which could be cool. So for example, when I look up cloak, like this wing thing is like, I like this shape, but I think because we have to turn this into a, a character that's got clothes, I think we could have it where he has, um, go ahead and duplicate it, where he has like a, maybe he has a cloak. And I see a lot of cloaks that have like medallions or they'll have like little extra like layers. So there'll be a cloak that's kind of got that shape, but then it also comes out and around like that. And now maybe we can make this cloak a little longer because it's not part of his anatomy, but you can see that's kind of where we start from. He could still have wings under there. There's nothing saying that he doesn't. Um, Wookie is a, trying to figure out my frog-like dragon. Please post and share. I would love to see all your guys' lizard wizards. Uh, Alicia is asking what program I use. Uh, this is Clip Studio. Um, I like Clip Studio and I like, there's like this Japanese soft ink line pen that I found that feels kind of more like a traditional pen. Um, and I like, I like working with it. I think it's fun. Um, so, you know, now, now he's got a little bit of that. And then maybe for his pants or something. A lot of wizards seem to just have cloaks, but I think I like trying to keep his his anatomy in there. But um, you know, maybe he's got just like a long cloak thing. And I think the key will be creating like a bunch of layers and stuff. But I'll do like multiple variations of something like this to come up with a few different designs. 
Uh, Action Gamer's asking, uh, what should come first, shape language or silhouette? I would say shape language first, just because silhouette, silhouette's very important as far as readability, but silhouette changes based on poses too, right? So based on how you pose a character, um, the silhouette can change, which is, um, you know, where it's still important to think of silhouette as a as a form of readability for your drawing, but shape language is, is more important when it comes to what are you trying to say about the character, right? Like, who is this character? Um, what do they do? How do they do it? You know, and kind of like, what's the story with that? Um, I'll get rid of the wings for this guy. And maybe now he has like a long cloak, <laughs> right? I mean, you're talking about connecting like a head to the body. Um, the biggest thing with that is knowing anatomy. So even if we're doing like a, let's say we're just going to draw a basilisk face here. The biggest thing of knowing that is knowing, you know, what's the structure underneath and how it connects. So if we have our rib cage here. Right, if we're thinking about like a human skull or an animal skull, it's all kind of the same. So the neck is a cylindrical in shape, but it, it also has a lot of depth. So usually the point of the neck is going to be lower on the front than it is on the bottom. So you're going to get that kind of shape connecting. But also you'll get something called the sternocleidomastoid, which is a muscle that starts in the back of the base of the skull behind the jaw and comes forward. So from a front view, that sternal cloud of mastoid actually comes and meets up at like a clavicle. And that's where you'll see, there's actually kind of like a pivot, like a, not a necessarily an empty spot, but there's the trapezius muscles that lay back here. And there's kind of like this triangular void between where the back of the neck is up here, if we were to draw through it, right? Versus it being lower. So the neck very much is kind of at an angle where it kind of does that as like a cross section. So, you know, for drawing this wizard, I try to make sure that I'm drawing that, that clavicle muscle because it gives a lot of really nice, um, direction to like a neck and to understand like where the neck's facing and how it's turning. And maybe just got a lot of little tapestry things. Could have like kind of normal pants. Show off his lizard anatomy. This is the hardest part about anthropomorphic characters, is I feel like um okay Sato, happy new year. Um was you want to show off like I always like showing off the animal anatomy portion of it, but at the end of the day they also have to wear clothes. So <laughs> um that's always a struggle of mine, is figuring out, you know, how do you balance the two? Because um, that one's always a kind of trickier one. But I hope that next stuff makes sense. So I'll grab another one. Maybe he's got kind of like
like a pointy hat, <laughs> but he's a basilisk. Triple A uh, action gamers asking in uh, in Triple A game characters they also use shape language example God of War villains like Thor Assassin's Creed yeah I mean every character is gonna have a every good character is gonna have like a good shape language to it most of the time um, and sometimes the shape language shape language is a very vague. Kind of like not vague but like a broad term um because it could mean so many things like what is the shape language of the entire world right like if you look at something like um like rick and morty or something or adventure time right like the shape language of that world is very specific but what is then the very specific shape language of a character like Jake from Adventure Time or something like that, right? Like, um, so you get into very weird areas where shape language will vary depending on, you know, what, what you're really talking about as well. Um, and so that's always, that's always another one too, to think about is you know, are you thinking about the shape language of your overall world of the character? Like, all the characters within Assassin's Creed or just, you know, uh, like Kratos himself or something like that, right? I like the idea of him being like a flying lizard. I kind of like the idea that these wings are his. Because I think it's a fun way to, to incorporate anatomy with his wizardry, so I think his costuming I want will have you know, maybe um, something a little different then. I still want to have like, um, man, I'm making work for myself if I do this, but some sort of like wrapping shawl or something. Kaisato's asking, uh, is this cut is this, this character a kind of lizard? It's a lizard wizard, oh Kaisato. It's a lizard wizard. So let's get wizardy and lizardy. That's the goal. It's kind of like a bag of weirdness. It could be actually called that. Like how the in Harry Potter, it's like a bag of holding.
It needs a name, it does. Um, Action Gamer is also asking how many days for one uh, character design? How many days does it take for one character design? It really depends on the character. I mean, for, for this stream, we just do today, you know, and what you see is what you get, um, basically. <laughs> uh, But, you know, it really depends on the studio and how long it takes. Like, Kratos, I think they were explaining that to get his look for the new God of War, it took, like, over a year, you know? And that doesn't include, like, all the armor designs and stuff that they did. So sometimes it can be, you know, it's it can be a lot of stuff. Um, but it really just depends on, you know, your production, your pipeline, and the style of your game and things like that. I do like these little shoulders. I'm going to try that again, but maybe in a different vein. Maybe he's got like the, my reference, some of them have this like long draped one. My sketches are super, you know, they're, they're messy to begin with, um, especially for this guy, but you'll see I refine or try to um, during the stream. Um, Action Gamer is asking, am I working as a character artist in the game or movie industry? Uh, yeah, I work as a character artist for, um, games. I'm currently actually switching to a new studio, so hold on tightly and I will probably tell you in the following weeks or so. Um, but yeah, switching my career up a little bit and going to a different studio, which I'm very excited for. Um, should be really fun. I'll still, don't worry guys, I will still be here doing art things, like always. Um, I would never leave you guys. But yeah, so, but I work as a character artist in games, so I model and sculpt and sometimes design characters. Um, I also worked in film before, I worked at Legacy Effects, um, doing practical effect making. So my whole career, I've been in the industry for about eight years now, has been specifically working on, you know, making characters. I think, I don't know which one I like, you guys. I think I like this guy, the one that I'm turning on and off. But I think I want to add more to the, um, I don't know, looking online, like cloaks and things, when I look up stuff like that, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of layers, so I'm gonna try to find some cool reference of stuff and see what I can kind of come up with here. Um, but Ariel's asking how many hours in a day do I draw? Um, I try to draw every day. I don't always draw every day. Um, but it varies. Um, I try not to tell my, I try to not to do a thing to myself where I go, you must draw, you know, um, for eight hours every day or something. I don't, I don't think that's the solution for getting better. I think the secret to getting better um, is practicing correctly. It's not necessarily gonna be like um, practicing for a long amount of time. Um, I think it's all about focusing on the right things, you know, um, and I think that's what's going to make you improve faster is are you focusing on the correct kind of anatomy or are you f practicing in the right ways? Not so much than just like practicing. Um, sometimes practicing doesn't necessarily get you better if you're not challenging yourself. Um, 
with the right things. Just debating what I want to do here. I think I'll go. I lied. I'm going to do one more. Not really feeling it. Where'd my, where'd my main guy go? Get over here. Not really feeling any of these guys yet. I'm also probably talking more than I am designing at the moment, but designing while talking is a tricky one. But I like the idea of like, because looking at stuff, I think he needs just a lot more layers, and I think these things weren't allowing me to create interesting layers. So I'm trying to think of his costume in terms of layering. There's some proportion stuff that I'll need to fix because, like, for example, his his waist is just too long, so it ends up feeling kind of awkward. Um, but it's fine. It's fine to get the idea out. Maybe I'll have like a side. Again, just I'm trying to think in layers. And I'm pausing answering questions about I try to actually think of a decent design here. <laughs> I still like the, the broken little cap, so it feels like he's, you know, if you were to just put like a hat on it, you're like, yeah, he's a wizard now. Oh my god, I just thought. How amazing would it be? Where's my anatomy drawing? How amazing would it be though? I can't, I'm not gonna be able to draw it, but his little, his little basilisk actually stayed in the hat. His hat had the basilisk head in it. <laughs> That'd be so cute. <laughs> uh, I kind of love it. So I might, I might just have to do that. I know it seems kind of generic, but like, it's very funny though. That like his, that the hat, the pointy hat actually serves a purpose, which is he puts his little basilisk cone head on it, which I, yeah, it's too, it's too good. I mean, I don't know why I didn't see that initially. It's pretty adorable, so. All right. So I'll go ahead and take that guy now. I'm going to hide everything else. And then we can kind of start maybe drawing um, a more final version of this with the hour that I have left. So I'll do something usually like this and then I'll um, lower the opacity and I can start to come up with stuff. Um, okay, so it says congrats on a new job. Thank you. Uh, good luck on your new creative journey. Yeah, I'm very excited. It should be a lot of fun. Um, Action gamers uh, asking some character designs don't have a neck. I mean, they could potentially not have a neck. I think most characters do. Um, but I can't tell if you're talking about for, you know, if you design for like, um, like in 3D, if a character's got like a hood and a cloak and all this stuff, then like, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff that we won't um, necessarily draw.
But I'll also, you know, if you have 3D questions on stuff like that, um, have no fear. Once we're done drawing this character, um, I will usually take, well, not usually, I will always, <laughs> I always take a char this character and then I will um, draw them out and sculpt them in, uh, in ZBrush. So I'm going to look up. So someone also was asking what kind of lizard am I referencing? I'm referencing a basilisk lizard, which I will bring up one, one second. So this is a basilisk. Pretty cool. So you can see he has the big pointy fin. And he's got these cool fins and things like that. I also referenced, you know, a flying lizard. Uh, but that's what a basilisk looks like. And they can run on the water, which is pretty cool. But they're very cool looking lizards. Um, super pretty. So I'm going to be basing... i got to get this out of here. Get out of here. Um, so I'll be basing his kind of like head design off of that. Um, so to start, I can... Usually what I'll try to do as well is... Um, Maybe try to come up with a head design for him. And something that maybe feels like it's a little more forward facing compared to like a usual basilisk. He's a happy lizard wizard. I'm trying to think of what kind of power. Maybe he maybe because they walk on water in real life. Maybe he's like a water type wizard, which I don't like, you know, elemental type. So I like to start by trying to come up with, um, you know, how would this character feel in 3D? would look like when he's, he's like talking or something. And I'm thinking, you know, I'm constantly thinking about if I drew this in, you know, if I was going to sculpt this in 3D, I'm looking at all these um, initial forms. Right, you gotta be able to picture how he is. Uh, I like the nose on top, so I wanna make sure that I incorporate that. And his nose is probably a little longer. So I'm thinking about like where his cheekbones would be, where his eyes sit. I'm 
And then you can easily take that. I'm only doing this because uh, of the time, too. You can easily take one. Um, drawing and reiterate on top of it to get a different expression. And then, you know, I don't know, like, uh, now that I have a better idea, yeah, I, I usually like to start with like the side profile and then try to figure out you know, how all that works in space. Make sure that that feels like it matches, right? Um, catching up on questions because I got very distracted drawing. Um, what do I do when a deadline's near but the character is not ready to show? That's a good question. Um, a lot of times you you just got to be very straightforward with your production. You can't lie and be like, yeah, it's it's done. You know, if you need more time working on something, you know, um, it's totally fine to approach and say like, hey, I'm really not done with this thing yet. Um, and here's the reasons why or like, here's the issues that I'm running into and stuff like that. Um, and like, how can I? You know, maybe maybe someone can come and look at it and figure out and try to help you. Um, don't work in a vacuum. It's really important to not work uh, in a vacuum. So if you're if you're struggling with something, you know, it's it's important to make sure that you let your producers know or let whoever you're working with and say like, hey. Um, you know, I'm really struggling with finishing this and I need more time and here's kind of why and kind of try to explain, you know, you're not going to be in trouble. Um, for, you know, not having something finished as long as, you know, your reasoning isn't, uh, oh, I just wasn't working. <laughs> um, or something like that. I'm trying to think of the expression I want to give them. Maybe he's facing a little more down. Chatbot, get that out of here. Lizard wizard. Yes. <laughs> the Jesus Christ lizard. I should have made him holy, I'm sorry. So I'll always still try to draw the uh, initial character in the clothes first, right? I think it's really important to 
figure out that anatomy. And again, a basilisk is very thin. So this is kind of fun because um, we get to sculpt a very thin, kind of fun character. Hopefully you guys can see that. Oh, it's also drawing below, so. There we go. So even though he's got, you know, the anatomy on top, or the, um, you know, the clothing on top, I will always try to make sure that I'm making sense of... that anatomy. And, you know, if you look up, like, um... Disney stuff or, you know, Pixar, they'll usually have, like, a nice T-pose, um... of, like, characters kind of unclothed. Uh, because it's really important to see, you know, anatomically, how are they functioning and how are they working. I remember, he's got his little flying wings. So again, it's it's part basilisk, but also part uh, flying lizard, because it's what gives him his cape. And what's cool is we can do a bunch of cool uh, like patterns and stuff later in 3D. We can make uh, a lot of fun. So this is where I'll try to really push out those legs and get a better feeling for the, the anatomical pose, right? Because my initial sketch is just, it's just a sketch. It's not, you know, don't feel so holden to what you did before. And he's got super long... Like, I think the most important part about accentuating the lizard part of him is giving him these ludicrously crazy, weird feet. Because if you look at, um... Look at that reference. <laughs> look how long that finger is. Like, look how crazy long they are. And there he is running on water, which is fun. I think I do want to make him like a water bending creature. I think that'd be kind of fun. Or wizard. Um, so I'm not sure if he's going to be holding a book yet. He might be holding like a ball of water. Like a little water thing. And you can see that my, I mean, this is still, I try to stay a little cleaner, but it's still very loose. I think I got really carried away before with trying to get like the perfect line work or something. You know, I used to zoom in and I'd be like, okay, line work time. I'm like, this is terrible. One, I never had fun with it. Um, but two, it doesn't capture like the essence of the character that you're trying to go for when you do stuff like that. You're getting too lost in trying to create a clean line than trying to create a nice flow. So I think a lot of that too. And they do have this cool, actually, the Basilisk has like a very fray, uh, like frilled tail. So I think I actually might Try to go for that instead. I think that could be kind of fun. Maybe make a little more sense of his 
fingers. Make sure that this feels more maybe like a like a thumb. I do love the idea of still doing ludicrously long. Lizard fingers always look broken too. Uh, I had lizards, I had Chinese water dragons growing up, and their fingers were always like so wacky, so it's kind of fun. Um, how do you bring your idea in creating characters on your own ideas or con stars that give you ideas? So in the industry, usually as a character artist that makes, you know, the 3D models, um, I'm usually working with another con stars who gives me a character design. Now that being said, sometimes those character designs are very rough or they're just like a kind of quick idea of, hey, I was thinking of this thing. And sometimes it's the character, um, the character artist's job to go in you know, and refine that and come up with other ideas that could be kind of cool for it. Um, and then sometimes it's a very fleshed out idea where you're just kind of making it as is. Um, so now I gotta give him a hat. This is on another layer, so I'll be... I've been erasing away what I don't need. If he's water, maybe these like little medallions are like teardrops or something. that hold this little kind of cape thing. Um, and now I can know, I now I know exactly where this anatomy lies right when I'm drawing out his uh, costuming which is important and still keeping it loose but you know just refining And also I'm thinking about stuff like, okay, maybe I should add more gesture to his, you know, clothes underneath now, right? Maybe he has like a really big waistband or something to accentuate. Um, you gotta either go really small we're really big with it. Um, actually, I was asking once to say to create the character related to the environment. Is that possible? Absolutely. I mean, if you're making a creature like an enemy, and maybe they don't have an idea of what that enemy is yet, they might ask you to be like, hey, we need like a swamp monster, you know? Um, do you have any ideas? You know, and I could go in and, you know, I can draw, so I usually will go in with a, a drawing first and be like, yeah, what do you think about, you know, how about this thing? And, uh, and then we can iterate on top of that. You know, that's pretty common. Trying to draw his uh, 
It gets a little muddy, I know, but I can, I can kind of make out what I'm doing here. Because he's got, I want him to have like a lot of little layers and stuff, so I'm just making sure that all these layers kind of fit on top of one another. And now that I have that, I can uh, go in here and add a mask. And I can just uh, mask out anything that I wouldn't normally see. I still have his um, body and everything for later, but it's just helpful to be able to do that. And then I could probably hide that sketch. I do need to draw his other hand, but I don't think I need the reference for that. Um, Ariel's asking, does AI affect digital art in the industry? Right now, no. Um, but it definitely is a threat to artists. I, would, I don't know if I would say artists in the industry at the moment. Um, but it's getting there. The biggest problem with AI art is it's taking um, art that's not, that's not theirs. Um, and it's having it spit out art based on the art it steals. So then artists are getting their art stolen. So that's the number one issue with AI art um, currently right now. And it's a very big problem because artists shouldn't be stolen from for their hard work and the time spent perfecting their craft. So that's a, that's a big one right now. So draw that on the clothes layer, draw layer down, draw that on. So I'm gonna copy that one, which is um, his body layer. So that way I can take all of these. And I'm just gonna merge those down, just because it's easier. And then I can start adding some line weight and stuff too. The initial sketch. And line weight will always just help block out, um, you know, overlaps of things and get more um, of a 3D feel and depth to your drawing. Uh, Tab was asked, do I often have back pain when I'm drawing for a long time? Um, yeah, I did. One thing that, I mean, so I, I work eight hours a day, you know, when I have my job and stuff like that. And it's important to, one, get up and move. Um, that's super important. Keep moving, keep doing things that are not just sitting at your desk and drawing. Um, stretch you know, in the middle of something, if you feel like you've spent too long at your desk. Um, definitely get up. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna break the rim of this hat a little bit here. I 
And you can see I erase a lot and clean up. It's like erase and then clean up stuff. Uh, but yeah, back pain can be like a big one. Uh, the biggest thing that you should do is get up and stretch, but also, I mean, I'm sitting fairly upright, but one thing that I used to do that I actually should probably keep doing is um, I used to sit on like an exercise ball or get a chair that's ergonomic and allows you to stay in comfortable positions for a long amount of time. Um, but our bodies are not meant to stay in places for a long amount of time. Uh, they did a study that they gave people like a really nice ergonomic chair and then they gave people really crappy chairs um, and they did an experiment of like, okay, if one person sits in the nicer chair longer, is it better? Is it worse? Is it this and that. And ultimately what they discovered was um, not that a good chair doesn't help, but you're still going to end up with back pain if you just sit for too long. So the study showed that actually the people that just got up out of their chairs and like did other stuff, um, you know, for like 20 minutes at a time or whatever it was, ended up having the least amount of back pain, no matter what chair it is that they sat on. Um, so that's really important. So, you know, uh, if you can keep a healthy body, you can keep a healthy mind, which is going to make you a better artist. Um, but it's also going to allow you to be an artist for longer. If you don't take care of your body, um, you know, I have tendonitis, so it's not a whole lot of things to combat that, but I try to do my, I try to do exercises. I try to stretch, um, to make sure that, you know, if my hand's starting to feel tired, I'll just stop drawing, you know? Don't force yourself through any sort of amount of pain um, just for the sake of drawing. That's not worth it, so. And then... This is gonna be fun because I've actually done water like this before, so. And I meant in 3D, not just, you know, drawing water. Um, so that'll be fun. Um, Ariel is asking why are some digital artists flipping while drawing? So it's a way, uh, it's an old technique that they used to do as well is, um, artists used to have a, a mirror and then they would look at their drawing through a mirror. And the reason you do it is to get a fresh eye. So when you stare at something for too long, um, you can't see the mistakes. So a really common thing to do is you look at your drawing and then you flip it. So I have mine on a hotkey so I can constantly flip back and forth. Um, and it's just so that way when I look at it, does it look correct from both sides? Because you'll see that, you know, sometimes I know one thing that I do sometimes as an artist is when I flip my drawing, I see that one eye might be slightly higher than it's supposed to be. Um, or something like that. And it's just a way to refresh your brain uh, from staring at something. So old, um, before it was digital, we they used to do mirrors um, in order to try to catch, catch those mistakes. So it's a way to just keep kind of fresh.
Can you just get some swirly bits? I think color breakup and texture is going to be um, a big one on kind of selling some of this design. You know, and like maybe a lot of like tapestry breakup, or like the tapestries and um, things itself are very varied in how they you know pattern across or whatever it is I'm just coming up with cool patterns that um will give break up to each of these different pieces of cloth. And yeah, I'm just going around adding little darker shadows in areas um, to give thickness to the design. Also, if you add, you know, thicker areas, it'll feel like it's more in shadow or maybe it's hitting a plane such as the ground, like what I'm doing right now. I'm just trying to draw a little like refractive areas in the bubble. Whoops. I don't think I'm gonna have time, you know, I'm not gonna have time to color it. Um, but I could kind of ink it in a way that hopefully feels like it's something a little more interesting. I don't know if it's effective or not yet though. And then we can um, let me see if it'll work. Hopefully, let me grab this guy and this guy. Thank you. 
Just coloring in something. It caught the whole this side of the arm. How annoying, but oh well. I'm too lazy to clean it up well. Um, Ariel says, can I make character layers just one character when finished? It depends on how I want to approach it. Um, most of the time, like, a finished character will have, I don't know, maybe, like, 20? I'm just gonna see if there was something that I had that was, like, semi-finished. This has, I mean, you can see all the layers here that I have for this character. Um, there's more underneath it, but that's for a different drawing, you know? So I have something like that, uh, but this isn't anything crazy, I guess, but there'll be like 20 layers or so. So I try to split, like, it depends on how I split up stuff. Um, I try to split, you know, like if I'm gonna do like shadow or something, you know, shatter will go on a separate layer. Shadow can add like a lot to your um, initial drawing. Especially if you just add some cast shadows in some areas. Really helps sell like that sense of overlap. So even something like that can add a lot. I didn't want it to be exactly the same color as the background, but it's fine. And then another little trick that I like to do is I'll duplicate my um, line work layer. And I'll go to filter, blur, and I'll do a Gaussian blur. And at first the strength seems really, really strong um, to blur the, the line. But it will help, it actually thickens up your line work quite a bit, but I never keep it at 100, it's too much. Um, so I'll always tone it down a little bit. 
just so you can barely tell. Um, but I like this effect because it, it'll make your line work pop a little more. But it also gives it, um, if you ever used to like sketch, um, uh, like uh, on pencil or pen or whatever, and you would try to Xerox it, um, it kind of leaves that same effect where it gives this kind of like noisy kind of feeling. Um, so yeah. Let me fill in these guys a little, a little bit. Oops, something got filled in. Oh, it's that area. Okay. But yeah, I also like to do these little, you know, character sketches on the side too. Um, just to get an idea of the character. Um, doing little... Drawings like that is... One, it's really fun, but two, I think you get to know your character better. When you can figure out like... Okay, what's the initial, you know... What's the initial shape of the character? And how do I draw him, you know, if he's like shocked at something. Make it be really loose at first. Um, I think it's important to get the expression first. Um, Okay, Sato said, I die. I can imagine him in the middle of battle running on water, holding his hat while throwing out some cool powers. Oh, we're definitely going to make him run on water. That's that's a given. Yeah, that's happening. Another thing, too, that you don't think about is you can use his fin as a point of expression. You know, I'm looking up something like, um, uh, like Looney Tunes or something. Actually, it's super helpful to see how they, how they exaggerate, you know, these kinds of fun facial expressions. You know, so I like drawing stuff like that, too, just to get a good idea of, you know, how do you make your character emote, you know, and how does he work in multiple angles? You know, what does he have, like, a really intense... You know, if he's in battle or something, can he... Like, the way you model them or the way you draw them, can I give him a more serious face, you know? And the more you draw your character, the, the better you will be at, at, you know, coming up with those. Like the faster your, your shorthand will get. Drawing those characters. got his hat on. Yeah. 
You can almost make his hat just like a samurai hat, <laughs> where it goes down so far. And that cuts right where the eye is, so that way you can see the eye. They do that a lot in animes. But anyway, there you have it. So there's our uh, lizard wizard for the month of January. Not quite a dragon, but close enough. So, um, yeah, so that wraps up today's stream. I hope you guys enjoyed it and had a lot of fun. Um, I definitely did. I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do coming into it, but um, pretty happy with his silly little results. So if you guys want to see me continue this character, go ahead and join me next week. Um, I will be here and we'll start sculpting him out in ZBrush. And you guys can do all the fun ZBrush questions and we'll get him, get him going, doing some fun stuff. So I'm super excited for him. Should be good. So tune in next time, same time, Wednesdays, 7 to 9. And uh, yeah, you guys have a good night and I will catch you later. Bye everybody.